Bangai Cardinals are one of the most popular fish that you can put in your reef aquarium. They're great in small tanks or large tanks and they are particularly easy to breed in a captive environment. So today we're going to run you through some of the care aspects of the Bangai Cardinals and we're going to show you exactly how to breed and raise the fry of the Bangai Cardinals. Bangai Cardinal are a relatively small fish, hence their suitability for small tanks. I would typically have them in anything from around about 100 litres, which is 25 gallons or more. They do great in reef tanks, they're fully reef safe, they're not going to picket coral or anything, and in fact the food for these fish is something that you do need to consider. Now I typically find that they tend to prefer small uh, shrimp like brine shrimp or mysis shrimp. You do hear about some people getting them onto pellets and dry food, but I really find that that is uh, a rarity and really uh, the, the exception. Most of the time they do prefer frozen food. Now what I'd like to talk about is exactly how you uh, start breeding Bangai Cardinals and the first thing you need to do is to choose a group of fish that you're going to use as your brood stock. So let's talk about choosing Bangai Cardinals for your reef aquarium. We have Bangai Cardinals in most of the aquariums at Gallery Aquatica and uh, the idea of this is that it is good for us to be able to have pairs of Bangai's in different tanks so that we can potentially breed them. And what I normally like to do to get a pair is to start with a, a small number of individuals. So typically I'll put in four to six Bangai Cardinals in a tank like this and I find that that sort of number allows uh, a very high chance that you'll get a breeding pair. And in a large tank like this, uh, starting with four or five, you'll end up with a pair and what they'll do is the, the breeding pair will actually own the tank or own part of the tank and they will push the, uh, the spares down to the other end of the tank and you, it's quite obvious when you see the, the breeding pair. Um, they will often make movements like they'll, they'll flirt, they'll uh, sort of swim with each other, they'll always stay together and when the, uh, the spares are uh, pushed down the other end of the tank that's when I'll net them out so that you end up with just the pair remaining in the tank. And certainly having a, a pair of Bangai Cardinals in an aquarium is, in my opinion, definitely the, the best way to keep them. Uh, people often like the idea of a school of Bangai Cardinals, but uh, I don't find that that works long term, unless it's a massive tank. The, uh, the tendency for Bangai Cardinals is always to, to pair off. And if your tank is big enough that you can have multiple pairs, then, then fair enough, but they don't really display that schooling activity um, once they're uh, you know, mature fish, adult fish that want to breed, they are much better off in pairs. And that's what we have in this tank here. We have a pair, and actually we do have one spare in this tank at the moment, uh, one that we haven't caught out yet. Um, but let's have a, a talk about the, the breeding pair in this aquarium that have actually spawned for us. So our breeding pair of Bangai Cardinals are actually under this um, frag rack and you can see the females on the left, the males further over to the right and uh, sexing these fish can be a little bit difficult and um, when they're uh, flirting and when they're breeding, I mean it's quite obvious but um, in between uh, mouthfuls of eggs they, they can be a little bit difficult and so this is the female here on the left and the, the reason why I know that she's a female is she's a little bit larger in the abdomen. Um, she has uh, less of the uh, spots through the center. Um, some people talk about the males having longer uh, second dorsal fins. I don't, don't really find that to be true so much. I think it's really more the, the shape of the fish, but the, the behavior, the way they interact really is a giveaway when you're watching them. Now our male is on the right and I know that he's the male, he's a little bit skinnier than the female and that's because he has actually been holding the eggs in his mouth for the last 28 days. So we're going to talk about exactly how 
you uh, how they breed and how they spawn in a second. But uh, the female here is on the left and the, the male is on the right, just over here. So let's talk about breeding the Bangai Cardinals. Bangai Cardinals are an easy fish to breed, mainly because the babies are quite easy to raise. Now we're gonna talk about that in a sec. However, the other reason why they're easy to breed is because of the fact that they're a mouth brooder. Now, anyone who's bred uh, African cichlids, particularly uh, Malawian and Tanganyikan cichlids, will probably have experience with uh, mouth brooders. And it does make them easy to breed because it's very obvious when the babies are ready to be, uh, what we say, stripped from the mouth. Now, the male with Bangalore Cardinals, it's the male that actually holds the babies. And when they spawn, it's quite obvious when uh, we see the, the Bangalore spawning in the store, they really sort of uh, do some quite obvious sort of flicking movements. The male sort of flirts in front of the female. They're kind of constantly looking at each other, doing this little dance. And in that process, the female releases the eggs and the male picks them up in his mouth. And when the male is holding the eggs, it's an incredibly uh, bulbous uh, jaw that, that they've got. Their, their mouth really sort of spills out with uh, up to 30, around about 30 sort of uh, eggs. And at first these eggs are yellow, and as they mature over 28 days, you'll actually see color develop in the eggs to the point that when they're right about at the point of needing to uh, come out of the mouth, they actually, you can see uh, fins, like little black fins poking out of the male's mouth. Now at that point, when they're ready, uh, at 28 days, at that point is when to get the, the best success with breeding your baby Bangai's, you take the male out of the tank, you very carefully catch him out. Um, I like to use really big nets so that if he does uh, spew the babies out, they, the babies will go into the net. But typically uh, you strip the babies from the male's mouth by taking him out, um, putting, holding him in a bucket, and people do it in different ways. Uh, I typically use my finger. I think that I've got better dexterity when I use my finger, but some people use a cotton bud to open his mouth and almost shake him so that the, the babies come out. Now, when we uh, were stripping the male uh, of the babies in this case, the, uh, the male actually spat the babies out. And that's a pretty good sign. Um, we, he spat them out into the bucket that we were going to strip them into. So it, we didn't lose any in that process. So we, we were a little bit lucky, um, but when the male spits out the babies, it, it's, it's generally a sign that the babies are due to come out anyway. And that was certainly the case with our babies here. And so once you've got the, the babies free swimming in a bucket, you then uh, need to isolate them in the aquarium. I, I like to put them in the aquarium that they came out of, or that the male uh, or the pair was, uh, was in, so that there's no change in the water. You could potentially move them into another aquarium, but I, I don't normally do that. Um, but then you isolate them somewhere safe so that you can then uh, feed them, watch them, and raise them up to a size where they're safe to be released into uh, a bigger aquarium. So we have our uh, baby bangais just here. Let's talk about what it takes to raise your baby bangai fry. We have about 16 or 17 baby bangais up here doing really well. Uh, we did strip over 20, so there's been a few that we've lost along the way, but that is uh, fairly standard when it comes to raising baby fish. But the ones we have left are doing really well, and we're raising them on live baby brine shrimp. Uh, this says live copepods, but there's actually baby brine shrimp in here, and we will show you in the future how to hatch baby brine shrimp. Um, baby brine shrimp is one of the best things that you can feed the Bangor Cardinals on when they're small, and this is one of the reasons why they are such a, a good fish to breed in captivity, because they don't need the more difficult things to culture, such as rotifers. So we've got our live baby brine shrimp. I'm just gonna strain it through here and feed a small amount like so. And the trick is really to ensure that they get a number of feeds of the live baby brine shrimp per day. Now baby fish do need to be well fed for them to grow and baby brine shrimp is best when it is newly hatched. That's when it's most nutritious. So multiple feeds of newly hatched baby brine shrimp is the best thing that you can feed your baby bangais. 
The baby Bangai Cardinals need to be on the baby brine shrimp for a few weeks, but after that time, you can try them on other types of food. And the, the first thing that I really like to get them onto are other little frozen things like frozen copepods and frozen red plankton and any of those small frozen invertebrates. Because once you can get them onto something like that, it means that you don't need to keep on uh, making or buying the live baby brine trim. Um, it is also good to get them onto some of the, uh, like the sterilized uh, or frozen baby brine shrimp. That does make it a little bit more convenient. Um, they will often go onto that after a couple of weeks, but um, you really know that you've, got, you've had success once you get them onto adult brine shrimp, adult frozen brine shrimp. Um, that is definitely uh, when you know that they should all survive. They are a delicate little fish up until the time that about the size of a, a five cent uh, piece or a, a one penny coin. You know, they're, they're, they're sensitive up until a certain size and then they're an easy fish to keep after that. But um, once they're eating the frozen uh, adult brine shrimp or frozen mice shrimp, that's when you know you've had success with your baby Bangai Cardinals. And at that point, I would consider putting them into a tank where they've got more space, they can swim around and uh, really treat them like the other fish that you would have in your aquarium. So that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV on the fascinating fish, the Bangai Cardinal. There's so much more to the Bangai Cardinal story that we really haven't had time for today. However, we do sell this awesome book called Bangai Cardinal Fish on our website. And it goes through a lot of the really interesting information about uh, Bangai Cardinals in their natural environment. There's some fascinating things about these fish, uh, where they come from and how they live on the reef. So um, it's definitely worth a look. But that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing.